In this video, we'll be looking at calculated attributes. First up, a standard calculated attribute. As with our standard calculated measure from the previous video, we have access to all of the different functions available in the BIM calculation engine to include in our formulas. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a plan rating, which will separate out our client plans into good and bad plans based on their level of revenue. To do so, I'm going to use an if then else expression. I'm going to tap if and return. This time we're going to be checking the sum of our revenue. So I'll start by typing sum to see all of my measures and I'll add in sum revenue. So here, let's say everything above 3 million is going to be a good plan and everything else will be bad. However, we're not finished. All this formula is going to do is ask BIM from the data whether the sum of the revenue is greater than 3 million. Obviously, the sum of the total revenue is going to be greater than 3 million, so it's just going to return a good value. What we need to do is give this calculation some context and compute it from the relevant attribute. In this case, it's client plan. So BIM is going to apply this formula to every single client plan and then split them out into good and bad. When I save and add in my plan rating, we'll be able to see the good and bad plans. And if I take out client plan now, we can see the revenue aggregated for our good and our bad plans. Groups allow you to create a group or groups of the values of an attribute. In this example query, I have revenue by country. If I wanted to create a group called Europe with all the European countries in it versus the rest, I can do so using a group calculated attribute. So I'm going to create something called country groups and it's going to be based on the country attribute. What I want to do is I want to select my European countries first, click the plus button to add them into a group. What we can do now is we can put the left values into another group and name that group. So I'm going to call that rest of world. The other options available are to keep the left values as is or remove the left values completely. When I save, I can now use my country groups in my query to show the total revenue for these two different groups. The next type of calculated attribute available is a set, which allows you to create a reusable list of attribute values. Much like we did with our group, I'm going to create a set called Europe. Again, calculated from our country attribute. And all I'm going to do is select my European countries. I can now add this into my query and see just my European countries as a set of attribute values. An ordered set allows you to change the order of the displayed attribute values. By default, BIM will display these values in alphabetical order, but there may be times when you'd like to change that order, which is when we use an ordered set. So here, for example, again using country, I'm going to create something called country reordered, and I'm going to put the USA and the UK at the top. So now in my query, that order will be kept when using this ordered set. You can also rename the values of a specific attribute using a renamed set. So I'm going to create renamed country based on my country attribute. And in this case, I'm going to change the UK value to United Kingdom. 
This will then be available to use in your queries. Next up, basket attributes, which allow you to create baskets based on value ranges. Working with some sales data, I'm going to create baskets based on my unit price measure with a basket size of 10. I'm then going to add this calculated attribute into my query along with a profit measure. So for every row in the data set where the unit price was between 0 and 10, we can now see the amount of profit that was generated and so on and so forth for all the other different baskets. The way we could use this is with result manipulation to sort the data, value descending, with the result being that the basket 500 to 510 generated the most profit. A top bottom attribute allows you to retrieve only the top or bottom values of an attribute. In this example, we're going to find out the top five staff cost countries. We're going to base it on staff costs. We're going to keep the top five and have zero bottom. And it's going to be based on our country attribute. We then have the option to compute according to the filters of the query. If we don't, the top five values will always remain the top five values, no matter what filter is applied to the query. However, if we compute according to the filters in the query, if I was to then change the filter of the query, the top five would modify themselves accordingly. So here, I'm going to add in my top five staff cost countries, and I'm then able to see those in relation to the revenue generated for those top five staff cost countries. The last type of calculated attribute available is a global variable, which allows you to specify ranges within which users can vary the values used in other calculations. We're actually going to take a look at these in a later video when we add global variables to a dashboard. We'll see how we can create them and how they work within an example dashboard.